So now let's make the router the root for VLANs 1 and 2 and edge 3 the root for VLANs 10 and 20. Once again best practice would say that your core switches should be the root of your spanning tree topology and if you don't have core switches then your distribution switches should be the root of your spanning tree topology. I'm changing it here just to show you what happens when we change the roots of a spanning tree topology. This is not best practice. So before configuring the router, notice if we type show spanning tree instance 1, the priority of this switch is 32768. The priority of the regional root is 32768. So edge 2 became the root originally because it had a lower MAC address. But let's change that. So we're going to say spanning tree instance, specify instance, instance 1. Specify a priority and let's set the priority to 1. Spanning tree reconverges and now if we type show spanning tree instance 1 you can see that this device is the root of the spanning tree and notice its priority 4096. The VLANs mapped are 1 and 2 as before. The roots priority is 4096. In other words this switch the 5406 has become the root for instance 1. However if we look at instance 2 this switch is not the root of instance 2. Edge 2 is still the root of instance 2. On edge 3 shows spanning tree instance 1 shows that this switch is not the root of the spanning tree topology. Device with priority 4096 is the root of instance 1. In other words the 5406 switch is the root. Instance 2, a device with a priority of 32768 is still the root. In other words, edge 2 is still the root of the spanning tree topology. So let's change that. We're going to say spanning tree, instance 2, priority, and let's set the priority in this case to 2, just to show you what happens. I've lost my connectivity for a second while spanning tree reconverges. And now if we type the command show spanning tree, instance 2, Two, notice this switch is now the root for instance 2 but notice the priority is 8192 because when we type this command spanning tree instance and the number priority and a number that priority value is multiplied by 4096 to get the switch's actual priority so the switch priority is 8192 but you type the command with a value of 2 in this case which is then multiplied once again by 4096. So on edge 2 typing the command show spanning tree instance 1 shows you that this switch is not the root of spanning tree its root port is TRK1 in other words it's using this port as its root port to get to the root bridge or root switch which in this case is the 5406 switch acting as our router and that makes sense because the 5406 is the root for instance 1 from edge 2's point of view this is the best path to get to the root bridge now I've removed the blocking and forwarding values on this topology because that would have now changed because the roots in the topology have changed. Once again on edge 2 its root port is TRK1 so you can see that TRK1 is forwarding and the port role is root but if we look at instance 2 notice port 2 is the root on edge 2 and that port is forwarding. Notice TRK1 is a designated port which is forwarding so in this case there are two root ports on edge 2 because there are two separate instances. So if we're going to fill in the forwarding and blocking options in this diagram we need to do it twice because there are two separate instances. Once again on edge 2 show spanning tree instance 1 shows me that port 2 is forwarding and scrolling down 
TRK1 is forwarding. The same is true for instance 2, but notice the roles of the ports are changing. Port 2 is the root for instance 2, whereas TRK1 is the root for instance 1. There are two separate spanning tree topologies. Let's have a look at edge 3. So on edge 3, if we type show spanning tree, instance 1, you can see that port 2 is blocking on instance 1. Edge 3 is not the root on instance 1. It's the root on instance 2. So port 2 is blocking on instance 1. And the other ports are forwarding. But if we look at instance 2, notice port 2 is forwarding. It's a designated port because this switch is the root for instance 2. The thing to remember, there are separate topologies for each instance. We have created two instances, and don't forget that there's still the IST instance. So as an example, if we look at edge 2 once again, show spanning tree instance 1, scrolling down, TRK1 is the root port on edge 2 for instance 1 but looking at instance 2 port 2 is the root port for instance 2 on edge 2 but if we look at the IST notice this switch is the root so at the moment there are three topologies so notice there are actually three roots in this topology the root for instance 1 for VLANs 1 and 2 is the router. The root for instance 2, in other words for VLANs 10 and 20, is edge 3. But the root for the IST is edge 2. In other words, for all other VLANs, edge 2 is still the root. Now you might want to change that behavior. Best practice once again would say that your core devices, in this case the router, should be the root of your spanning tree. This topology isn't necessarily a good design because there is no redundancy. If the 5406 went down, all the client machines would lose connectivity to the server, PC1. So in a larger environment, you might want to implement some redundancy in the topology. But please be aware once again that in multiple spanning tree, there are multiple instances. Different switches can be the root for different instances and that in turn will affect which ports are blocking and which ports are forwarding. Just to recap on edge 3, if we look at instance 1, notice port 2 is blocking. If we look at instance 2, notice port 2 is forwarding. If we look at the IST, the port is forwarding. So the state of port 2 on this switch varies depending which instance we're looking at because we have chosen different switches to be the root for different instances. As I've already explained, load balancing can be implemented by using multiple spanning tree. Now what about failover? When I showed you in the previous video where we only had a single instance of spanning tree, the failover was very quick. So in this example I'm going to set up a continuous ping from our recording PC to PC2 and it's actually still going from when I said it previously. So this is a ping from our recording PC to 10, 0, 10 to 50. You can see the pings are succeeding and here's the second ping from our recording machine to 10, 0, 20 to 51. So what happens if I for instance shut down this link between the router and edge 2. So on edge 2 show interface brief shows me that both port 1 and port 3 are part of TRK1 and the interfaces are up. So I'll go into interface 1 disable the interface do the same on 3 Notice there's a timeout, and let's see if the network converges.
you can see the pings are succeeding now so the network has converged it took longer than previously so let's try that again I will go into interface 1 enable the interface do the same on 3 enable it let's see if we lose any pings you can see there we've lost a ping so we lost a ping on one side of the network but not on the other everything is continuing as normal so back on interface 1 I'll disable the interface do the same on 3 disable it you can see we lost one ping there previously so we're starting to lose some pings but very few pings have been lost so we lost one ping let's enable again so do one more test so show interface brief now you can see both interfaces are up we lost one ping to PC2 but nothing to PC3 I'll disable the interface again do the same on 3 you can see we've lost some pings but not many so the network is converging slightly slower than it was with pure rapid spanning tree but the convergence is very good so I'll enable the interface and do the same on port 1 and as you can see we lost a single ping so convergence is very good with multiple spanning tree